This is Comic Picks by the Glick. Yeah, I'm your host, Jason Glick. Hey, Jason Glick. What's going on tonight? Hey, John. Uh, can my house might burn down in about an hour, but other than that, it's all good, you know? Do you need firefighters? They're, they're there. It's like, you know, it's like, but at the same time, so, you know, if I have to, like, if I suddenly cut out for a second, then you'll know the reason. Got it? Got it. Got it. Okay. And also, it's like, as you may have guessed, like, you know, from like the uh, people people who are here in this chat, it's like, hey, Steve is back. Hey, welcome, Steve. Good to have you back. Hello again. Yeah. And, you know, Steve is back because, you know, not only did he recommend to me the series we're talking about tonight, but he also talked, joined us, like, talked about it for like a little bit, you know, back when we were doing a dual podcast on, on uh, Fire Punch and also Chainsaw Man. So, like, good to have you back, Steve. Always a pleasure. Yep, same here. Okay, but you know it's like, and also it's I guess it's like it's probably worth warning off anyone who's about to listen to this that we're about to go full spoilers for this series, because you know it's like we've read all eleven volumes. It's like, and yeah, we're all all into this series, but at the same time, it's like I really want to talk about you know what went on in the final volume. So let's just let's just you know that you know we like the series, but you know it's like this is all going to go deep into like you know talking about all the stuff that's great about it that's going to involve spoilers. So, that being said, um, Chainsaw Man is a series from Tatsuki Fujimoto. It's like a guy who did a um, a series called Fire, Fire Punch, which is about a uh, guy with incredible healing abilities who was set on fire and tried to become a hero, but you know had you know all sorts of issues you know with being set on fire like years ago as a result. And it's something that we like you know like for the like big risks it took. It's like rather than being like yeah, it's like it. I think it wound up okay, but at the same time, I I enjoyed it more for like just like stuff that you look at this and go like, yeah, I don't see this a lot in like see the kind of stuff that he does in this in uh, in entry manga a lot these days. I mean, that's some of its its appeal to you, Steve. Mm, it it definitely be hard to sell as a uh, as a mainline Shonen Jump thing, and uh, I. I you know, I agree with you. I like what what they did. It was uh, it was definitely a lot. It's not not very formulaic. Um, I think it I think it breaks the mold a lot, a lot of places. And uh, you know, it's probably not probably doesn't have mass appeal, but that's okay. I don't care. Uh, as long as it did well enough to get to financing, you know, financing things and keeping the lights on, which it seems to have, because uh, here we are, we have Chainsaw Man, which is uh, has a lot of the same sensibilities, but the filed off some of the rough edges to make it a bit more, you know, uh, you know, mass, give it a bit more mass appeal, as we can see by uh, the fact that it has an anime coming up. Absolutely, I am thoroughly looking forward to the to the anime coming from Studio Mappa, you know, the guys who made um, Doro Hidoro and um jujitsu kaisen it's like and i think that you know like would you want to have said like hey you know it's like like these are the guys who made those series and like this is basically a series that's basically like derivative of both so hey this is gonna be a this is gonna be great so i am i am all for it and i'm looking forward to it when it comes when it finally comes out assume it uh, like um it seems like it's going to come out in the fall so we'll see about how how that goes but it's I think it's just think it's crazy that you know someone at Shueisha um basically like looked at um Fire Punch. It's like and um basically said, you know what? We want this guy in jump. You know? Yeah, I'd say it's a I'd say it was a ballsy play, but you know, it panned out thankfully. For all yeah, it's like Oh, yeah, it's like I mean this could have this is that's this is a movie that could have like either just like, you know, just like self-destructed and you know resulted in something that you know like was like a major misfire on on the creators and the publishers part but ultimately seems to have like you know like blossomed into like something that has genuine mainstream appeal and yeah i think you're right about the fact that it um it does file off the rough edges of um it's like that word that um, fujoto displayed in fire punch but at the same time it's like you know it's he didn't fire them file them off thoroughly enough that it's like this is like it's like a very like you know safe formulaic um jump manga no very chainsaw man is a series that it's hails very much from the um fist of the north star school of stuff that your parents wouldn't want you to read you know (laughs) hell yeah 
exactly because down to some to just like establish the base the the premise of the series i mean you know it's like it's a it's tale as old as time song as old as rhyme you know kids you know kids i'm um, fighting you know like demons um type type series you know it's like and the character we're introduced to at the start of the series is denji it's like like a teen who's like you know basically press ganged into um like killing like killing um demons from demons for the mafia because his dad ran up this um huge tab with them before he died and like you know, when he and after he died you know the mob mob basically like you know press uh, told denji that, hey you know you're working for us now and denji is basically you know working with this um this little devil um pochita who is called who is known as a chainsaw devil to um it's like to um take out these these demons it's like and you know it's like at we're start, at the beginning of the series you fight, see he's like he's lost one eye he have lost like additional organs but he's also just you know doing whatever he can in order or survive you know to his his basically his base his dream is basically like you know i can have some good bread you know it's like from after a job you know like in order like after, after things are done but um he because he's like you know being um pressed kind of by these um yakuza types uh, well it's like he it's like you know they eventually like you know like set offer him up to like their like the person the devil that's running them which turns out to be the zombie devil it's like and they said okay you know it's like you know we're just gonna like like you're just no good to us we're just gonna like let let the zombie devil kill you they do then he winds up some pieces in a dumpster but it turns out that you know pochita like his little chainsaw devil like it was just so adorable you know it's like sides like so much believes in like you know what Den in denji's dreams of just you know like like being able to like have good bread, being able to like you know talk to a girl, it's like that kind of that kind of stuff. That he agrees that he basically like you know makes a contract with them. He wants to he wants to see Denji's dreams and this be agrees to become his heart. And so Denji gets gets to live again, but Pochita is his heart. And there's this little like um like a uh, like uh, tr like um drill thing coming out. Uh, what is it? The, this little like a knob thing coming out of his heart that he pulls. And he can become the devil chainsaw man. So someone who got chains, chainsaws coming out of his head, his his arms, and also spoiler warning, his legs to just like you know murderize anything that you know comes his way. And you know he murder he murderizes the, the uh, zombie devil pretty good. And that's when um and after he's done that, you know that's when he meets uh, Makima. Makima is the head of the public safety division, the wing of the Japanese government that's dedicated to um killing. It's like um to um controlling devils and just making sure they're not you know part of the uh just not not making like you know people's lives too much so and you know when she when she comes upon him it's like she basically like, like you know says hey you know want to come want to come work work for me it's like i'll make sure you're you're well you're fed you're well fed you have a light like you have a nice place to live it's like and then she's like oh man she's so cute i'll totally do this man and there you go it's like he's got like here we've got the the premise of the series established. Denji's gonna go and kill kill the devils that Makimi Mak asked him to do. And yeah, you know, like the series is gonna like, you know, ride the um shouldn't jump money train. It's like 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 to the end end of the road, which is how it's going to go, right, Steve? Well, uh so I should clarify some things. So first of all, it's she doesn't do it out of the goodness of her heart, it's work for us or die. Secondly, he's working for her as her dog. Um she yeah, but it's, it's, it's worth mentioning that you know, like he, his, his sense of life is just like so, so, so screwed up at this point that you know when she says, "Yeah, I'm gonna, uh, you're gonna be my dog," he's like, "Woof." Well, I mean, yeah, I mean, she gives. Well, again, she, to be fair, she gives him two responses that he can give: yes and woof. So, mm -hmm. I mean, it, it helps that he's you know willing to do it because hey, hot girl, and he's into that sort, sort of thing. But, um, you know. It's not much of a choice that he has. Mm -hmm. I mean, he's he's in he's he's cool with the choice. It's just he didn't have one. Um, Denji's poor, uh, and I mean, I feel like the I feel like you know the author demonstrates that you know yeah he's poor, but he's got standards. So for example, he'll pretend to eat cigarettes for money, right? So mm -hmm. he's desperate, right? He's been selling his organs for cash just to uh, make the payments to uh, to the yakuza. Uh, but, you know, even he's got standards, right? He ain't going to munch a cigarette. He's just going to pretend to for mm -hmm. 100 yen. Um, so there's that. Um, I like, so as you can see by the 
uh, by the devil names, right? Like they're simple to understand. There's no, there's no allegory or, or analogies or metaphors going on here. They make it real simple. Zombie devil. What does it do? It makes zombies, right? A gut, you know, there's a gun devil. It, it, it shoots things really good, right? There's the chainsaw tomato devil. man. <laughs> yes. And so on. Right. Um, you know, they do what they say on the tin. And I think, I, I don't know if there's a proper term for this. Like, is, is the author's like smart dumb. He's dumb smart. I'm not really sure how to put it, right? <laughs> like, like it's, I, I like that, you know, he just says, hey, here's the devils. Here's what they do. Nothing complicated about it. You know, just here's what they do. Um, the, um, I also like that um, in the first chapter, the resolution of the final battle is already given away. We say already given away. I mean, it's like we can assume that you know, like, hey, yeah, Chainsaw Man was going to kill all the the, uh, the zombies, you know. Cause... No, 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 no. I, what I mean is specifically the immortals stay dead if eaten. Maybe by him mm. specifically, but um, you you may notice that if you go back to chapter one, um, you know, the zombie devil notes that you know the immortal will be dead, will stay dead if eaten, um, and this seems like sort of a throwaway thing. Um, but we may return to this later. That's that's a good point because like this because this is like an eleven volume series, and I'm not saying that he planned out every last detail, but this speaks to like you know he definitely had like some some clear plans in mind for like you know how you know, for like for the char- for the characters' arcs involved. Yeah, and and it's cannibalism, which is a recurring theme from Fire Punch. Um, <laughs> oh yeah, good old cannibalism, man. It's like it's one of you know, one of Fujimoto's, you know, um, pet favorite themes. And yes, I, I like, I, I like, uh, you know, the motivations for Denji, right? I mean, what's his motivation? Girls. It's relatable, right? It's relatable to the, to the main audience of like, you know, the usual audience of, you know, Shonen Jump series, right? I mean, fuck yeah, right? Yeah, it's like, I mean, what I, I think what I like best about this series, and it's not just written for actual 15 year olds, but it's also written for people who are who are still in touch with their inner 15 year olds for 15 year old, which, you know, I think speaks to us. Hell yeah. Yeah. It's like, cause I don't, cause otherwise I don't think that the whole, um, you know, his whole encounter with Aki, who, well, you know, well Aki is basically the, uh, you know, older, like mature, like devil hunter type uh, that we encounter in the fir- first volume. And, you know, it's a key, it's, you know, he's basically like, he, like he, we've seen his kind of, his, his, like his type of character in Shonen Jump before, but you know, it's like, he's just basically like the older brother, the rival, the rival type. But at the same time, you know, it's like, you know, he, he, he's basically tells Denji like, yeah, you know what? Like if you're just here, just, just, you know, like just for like the, uh, to not actually like fight devils, like then you just get the hell out right now. And what does Denji do? Denji like kicks him in the nuts because, Hey, you know, it's like, I, I like what I'm doing here. Like, you know, mocking Miss mocking was nice to me. And like, I only fight when I, and when I fight, I just kick people in the nuts. You know, it's like that's it's dumb. It's gloriously dumb because because like I'm um, Fujimoto like, excels at writing this kind of like this this kind of like dumb dumb character like that's dumb in entertaining ways, really. So I mean, it's like it's like so basically like after like you know he like Denji and Aki fight, you know like like Denji wins and then like he basically, basically like drags Aki back to uh, Makima saying like. Oh man, the, the testicle devil attacked, it's like, and it's like and like you know like we fought him off. It's like and Aki's like no, he's lying. So it's this kind of like you know this kind of like, like enjoyably dumb stuff that defines the series, and it's also kind of like colors like you know the introduction of the other um like you know main supporting character in the series that would be Power, because she's basically an example of a fiend, which is basically like you know because some some devils they manifest to themselves, others. You know, tend, tend to jump into like human bodies or like more directly interact with the, with our world, and though they become like you know fiends that exemplify their their trait. Power is the blood fiend. She is the blood devil who jumped into a like into a body, and she's just like you know, hey, it's like I'm power. It's like I'm so I'm so crazy and cute, and you love me. It's like I'm just gonna like you know like beat, beat the crap out of anyone who's like says otherwise. It's like you know that's like, and she's just like a, like. And and like her 
And her drive is like, you know, she wants to get her, her cat back. And so she's going to sell Denji out. But, you know, we haven't even gotten out of the first volume yet. It's like, and this is like, you know, how things are going to go. But I I really like Power because she's, she's like, you know, so unrepentant about what a, what a total asshole she is, you know? Yeah, like uh, she she leans full into it. She's super overconfident. You know, it's a it's a very uh, it's a strongly flavored character. I didn't want to say a strong character, but it's a strongly flavored character. Um, you you get a real sense very quickly of you know uh, how how she how she feels about herself. She's the best, uh, and everyone else sucks, and <laughs> uh, only she's important. Um, and you know the. Uh, I like that as time goes on, you know, the, you know, the, you know, this character growth and, you know, the, the, the edges get sanded off a bit. A, a bit. <laughs> <laughs> this is a bit, you know, cause this is the character who basically runs down like what appears to be an innocent devil hunter. And then basically says, I didn't do it. It's like, it was like my part. It was my partner. Um, Kobeni. It's like she, she did it really. Cause you know, like this, cause like this, like I said, I, I like this, the series like, you know, excels in just like, you know, like setting up stuff. Cause like, you think it's going to be about, you know, Oh, we're going to like, you know, like take on like the um, deep devil of the week bit, but no, it's like, you know, that kind of like lasts until volume three when um, they encounter the Katana devil. And uh, cause apparently Katana devil was also a uh, character who was a, like who, like he, like he was the uh, nephew of the uh, like of the yakuza who press gang Denji into his like you know like like sorry life, and um you know like then like a whole bunch of people that, that are like you know we thought we were gonna be key to the series die it's like like in volume like in volume three, and uh, it's also worth mentioning that you know like like um Fujimoto loved um ripping down the status quo every three volumes in it's like in Fire Punch and that remains true here it's like. Every like every couple of volumes, like he'll introduce like some new characters, and then they'll die horrible deaths. It's like, and you know, I gotta admit that's honestly kind of, kind of refreshing, especially with um like a Shonen Jump series, because this is a series that I bought entirely digitally. Because like these days, when I when I buy a series, a manga series specifically, I get the feeling that it's going to be you know, it's like you know, going to be a long ass series, like. Um, like say Kaguya-sama, which is going to be finally going to wrap up in volume 26. So um, with Chainsaw Man, I bought it digitally because I figured, oh man, it's like we're going to be like dealing with volume 70. It's like in like a few years, you know, how it is. But no, this is like 11 volumes, and there are only like a few distinct distinct arcs here. Like there's the uh, hotel arc where like Denji, um, Aki, Power, and um, it's like what was the uh, the other the other girl's name the one who barfs into Denji's mouth uh himeno um, himeno yes like when they wind up trapped in the uh like in 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 the hotel so i thought oh man this is going to be here for a while oh nope only two volumes and then um then himeno barfs into Denji's mouth because you know this is Denji's lot in life with girls you know it well the lead in is the lead in's pretty great because for to that particular scene because you know you you're thinking it's going to be it's uh you know she's getting She's getting flirty with him, you know, and you're thinking, okay, you know, all right, cool. This, you know, he's finally going to get a little action, right? And, you know, this is a series that is at times, uh, you know, all out action. Sometimes it's it's really introspective. And sometimes it's fucking just gross out funny. And so, you know, you're thinking, you know, he's like, ah, this is what a kiss is like. Why is it? Why is it all warm and wet and oh my god the next panel is her <laughs> into his mouth. it's like whoa i did not expect that i thought it was it was that was just a fantastic uh um it was a fantastic subversion of my expectations yeah it's like the series does a great job of like you know playing into like our expectations from a shonen jump series but also just kind of like saying nope not gonna happen and i think that's a large part of part of its appeal it's like even when it doesn't quite deliver it's like like on this it's like um like when uh when Digi finally like you know thinks he's gonna get get his girlfriend you know it's like like Reese, you know it's like she seems like like a uh like a really like really nice girl and then we're like threatening the idea oh my god like the typhoon devil is gonna send this you know crazy um like mohawk like you know half skin face guy to kill her and then she murders like 
the the t- typhoon devil's agent re- and reveals that oh she's like some like ha- she's a ha- she's a Russian devil who is sent to like you know take out Denji. It's like, damn. He can't catch a break. He can't he can't catch a break, and it's like it's like and yeah it's like you like I mean like it's just got that kind of like expectation you know like they were setting up that you're setting up to like to you know like oh this is how it's gonna play out and nope not gonna happen but even then like there's some times when like you know his reach exceeds when um Fujimoto's reach exceeds his grasp like you know i mean like i liked the uh the fight against Rees, and all especially when like you know he does his like loses his chainsaw his chainsaw um like chains to him get beam the uh the shark devil it's like hey to um you know just ride against the uh the typhoon devil it's like and and the typhoon devil's like nope this isn't what i was asking but okay i'll do it anyway so but then at the end when like when he just you know grabs you know like um reason in chains to drags her down to the bottom of the ocean so like yeah you can't ex- you can't explode now huh and then the series just like cuts to the uh next day and like they're they've washed up on the ocean on, on the beach and it's like oh okay um sure let, yeah, let, let's go with it. let's see where you're going where, where you're going there and i'll admit that you know like the uh like 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 the recriminations where where like where Reese just like you know says no i'm not gonna be with you but then she realizes that okay maybe like he is like my best chance for a normal life and then goes back to um she tries to go back to him and then makima shows up and we realize hey you know maybe makima isn't you know the best like solution that denji has you know it's like like when she emerges out of that pile pile of rats and then like teams with the uh with the angel devil to kill to kill Reese, you know it's like you think that oh wow it's like you know maybe makima isn't you know like as good as she initially promised that's i mean like you kind of got that feeling beforehand because hey you know she was you know, saying like, "Hey, Denji, you're my dog now." But you know, this is when like it becomes explicitly clear that she's not a good person. In fact, she may not be even a person at all, right? Well, as we find out later, yes, uh, she is. Uh, I mean, if we're going to go into if we're we're, we're going, going full spoilers this, here. Uh, yes, she's a control devil. Uh, surprise. Uh, you know, the, uh, the Japanese government, like most governments, has decided, you know what, they, they need a, they need a bit of help, you know, they need a bit of help con- keeping things under control. And so they've, uh, they've contracted the control devil to do things for them. Mm-hmm. And it's so probably worth mentioning at this point that, you know, the devil's name kind of con- that con- corresponds to their strength. You know, it's like, what what primal fears do they like? Do they embody? I mean, like, you know, Denji is like, you know, the chain. I mean, he's chainsaw man, but he's basically like embodying the chainsaw devil. And you know, you know, chainsaws, you know, pretty fucking scary if you're on the receiving end of them, right? Yeah, yeah, it's a pretty primal fear. <laughs> yeah, and you know, big fearing of control. Yeah, you know, also as well. Other primal fears, you know, it's like, you know, hell, darkness dolls i mean not not santa claus i mean like i think like it's implied that santa claus is a primal fear but not really you know (laughs) (laughs) i mean it could be for some people yep because i mean after the uh after after reese's after reese's um storyline like we get we like um chainsaw man's existence is made known to the world and other like countries decide Okay, well, we need to like you know make take steps to like you know like like to you know, make, make sure this devil is like you know not a a uh, an issue to us. And so, so Germany like sends like their their um top devil um Santa Claus, who is you know spoiler warning, <laughs> like major spoiler warning that he's all he's actually like a a he doesn't know it, but he's actually a subservient to the uh, to the doll devil. Oh, and also like America just sends out like a couple of hillbillies. It's like to uh to take him out as well and this is where um power comes in to um take one of them out unknowingly because she just wanted to drive kobeni's car and <laughs> yeah it's, 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 it's worth mentioning at this point that you know kobeni is probably like the she's the most tragic out of all these because like her thing to sum it up is she didn't even want to be here today you know <laughs> yeah she's she's the most put upon member and she 
pretty much just exists to be uh, comic relief as her car, her poor car gets smashed uh, over and over. Yeah, even though it's like a, she's re, she's revealed to be like really aesthetically gifted. Like like she maxed out her like she like she um, basically maxed out her stats and dexterity because remember when she uh, you know took the uh, the the snake devil like um, prisoner at the uh, it's like at, at at knife point. And Aki is basically saying, like, "Wait, I thought you quit. Why, why are you still here?" She's like, "Well, we're supposed to get our bonuses soon, right?" <laughs> <laughs> that that's Kobeni right there, and she's she's basically just you know, yeah, she really does exist to be the most put upon member of the series. It's like to the point where like you know, it probably isn't a surprise to say that she lives through like this whole experience, but you know, it's like she lives through it in a way that you know she's going to be thoroughly traumatized as a result of it. You know, but it's 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 really quality quality dark dark humor right there, and I I love it, especially when um well later later on when she's forced to do dan when she's forced to do DDR to save her life, and all <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but but the whole um you know like um like doll devil arc I guess you could call it yeah you know, it's like it it definitely had had its high points but it also had kind of its low points because like I think that you know like when they're when everyone is thrown into hell at a certain point, um, Fujimoto's like depiction of hell is it's probably more esoteric than actually scary. You know, like they got the the doors, you got the uh, half like the the bisected astronauts and the characters who like lose their arms at the hand of the uh, at the hell devil. I mean, did you were you scared by that, Steve? Because Mm, well, I mean, no, but I, I. How do you draw? How do you draw a thing that is like? How do you draw a thing that is hell that is universally scary to everybody? Right? I mean, I, I'm willing to. I'm willing to give him a pass here. I mean, you know, hell's different for everybody, right? He's got to go. He, but he's got to give some sort of interpretation of it for the sake of the plot, and he just moves on from there. Yeah, I mean that's fair. It's like in. I will say that you know the resolution of the arc, this arc is thoroughly dumb in the sense that you know dumb in the, the way the series like I like in, in the way I like for the series, which um, you know involves like Denji setting himself on setting himself on fire in order to counteract the uh, like like the darkness devils like effects. It's like and like that was yeah, I mean that that was fun. It's like just saying to him like oh yeah it's like you know fa like face my light you know that <laughs> that kind of thing and also. You know how the adult level is finally dealt with, which you know it's it's a kind of strange that I really respect because you know it's like there's this one character in this arc, um, it's like what I forgot the um, um Quan Chi the uh, like this this Chinese um like um Spike Devil who she, she's got um all these other like you know like fiends like who are part who are her who are her lovers and one of them is the uh it's like the Chaos Devil who basically says Halloween as her as her thing and you think like okay well that's that's a thing you know but um it's like it's but you know like when it's finally revealed that oh like you know what the chaos devil actually does it's like and how she be like imposes like the uh like you know the, the the entire knowledge of um a thing like like in her head it's like oh it's you know it's kind of it's kind of great you know like when she says, like when she realizes that she's basically going to impose all the knowledge of the universe onto the doll devil, and that basically it turns out everyone, like that the doll was possessing, like it's like, oh, you're just going to say Halloween? No, that was pretty. That was pretty great and kind of kind of messed up as well. <laughs> yeah, it's it's just it's very on brand for the for the series. Yeah, and I guess it's also probably worth mentioning that. Um, you know, like we don't want to talk, miss talking about Kishibe, who is the um, mentor type for the series right yeah he's uh you know at, uh i forget when it is exactly but you know uh he and uh he's he takes uh he starts training um uh denji, denji and power. power yeah they have a they have a training montage and uh it's just in time for you know whatever their next battle is yeah for the whole yeah, it's like you know, for the whole for the whole doll doll devil arc. But you know, he basically he's the guy who just like meet when he meets him, he like he takes him in his arms, like gives him a nice hug. He's like, yeah, it's like nice to meet you all. And then he just snaps both of their necks in his arm because you know it's like, hey, it's like you know he just he just knows how to. He's someone who's like 
been doing this for a while and he realizes that hey you know it's like i think that um you know it's like if i have enough if i have if i'm working with toys this time you know it's like no, i'm not gonna be like you know like at a loss when they when they die because i've been doing this for a while and everyone i've trained has died so and he's also the guy who basically says that oh he knows he kind of he's the one who leaves that Makima is up to no good and he tries to set that set that with Quan Chi and she basically says take her chances and it turns out badly for for her so but also like you know the whole like um cha- like um gun devil thing which who is basically like, essentially like you know the, the series big bad well he's not really the series big bad he's just basically kind of a uh a thing that needs to be solved like like once um like i guess it also like bears to mention that um aki is probably the most tragic um character in the series in the sense that um he uh he kind of loses everything over the course of the series he loses his best friend it's like he loses loses his arm he loses his devil it's like and you know things just keep getting worse and worse for him like up until like you know the point where he goes out to um hang out goes to a trip up north to hang out with um no to pay respects to his to his um parents grave because they were killed by the gun devil and him fighting against the gun devil is supposed to be like the big thing you know like him you know just taking out like the gun devil is supposed to be like his you know big you know goal for the series but you know when he does that you know like he brings um power and denji along and they're just being such brats that you know they they just like distract from him and i i think that's kind of like um kind of fun when he says that you know it's like i was gonna be like you know brooding over these over this stuff while i was up here but no you two you're just such dicks that you know it's like i was able to like avoid that and denji's like yeah thanks i think (laughs) so yeah it's like it's so it's so you you, it's like you get with where um he's going with with um, with aki but at the same time you know it's like he uh well fujimoto basically realizes that you know hey that when you got that kind of when you've accrued that kind of sympathy for a character well it's not gonna end well it's like because basically aki wants to have um power and denji avoid fighting and dying at the end at hands of the gun devil because he also winds up contracting with the future devil and the future devil basically shows him this horrible future where power and denji die it's like and he wants to like avoid that and you know he does he avoids that doesn't he steve that he he totally avoids that <laughs> Well, I mean, he he did the best he could with what he had, and you know he uh, un, you know I forget the circumstances, but you know I mean, this is a character that you know this is this is a sort of character that you kind of see live to the end of you know a, a typical Shonen Jump series, right? And um, you know as as you just said, Jason, like he he goes through a lot. He he's had a lot of tragedy, you know, in his backstory up till his introduction. Um, he continues to suffer tragedy throughout the series and you know to cap it all off i forget the exact circumstances but um he like he becomes the gun devil basically and, uh makima um like con- like contracts him as part of the devils that she's using to fight off the the gun devil but then um the gun devil he takes them all out and he be- gun devil basically jumps into aki's body to become the gun fiend and denji is forced to kill him too yeah, in a in a tragic snowball fight to the death. <laughs> I mean, it sounds ridiculous, but I mean, it, it really is pretty fucked up. Yeah, it's like I mean, like I think that yeah, because like it, it it's just yeah, it, it is re- really messed up because like you know, you expect you know like the big fight between them, but Fujimoto finds a way to like you know you know portray this in a way that you know like it's basically like what you expect. But also just not quite the same the same as well it's like and it's it's just basically really really tragic at the same time it basically leads into the fact that you know the, like the final like the final arc of the series where you know the gun devil has been killed but oh you know, denji is just you know depressed because he basically had to kill like kill his friend and power it's like you know she's just like traumatized from the fact that they were brought into hell it's like and had to come out of it i mean it leads to the fact that it leads to like the most chaste um bathing scene i've 
fight ever seen in manga. You know? <laughs> hey, it, it, expectation subversion is pretty much what this guy does. Yeah. I mean, it's like, it's just really messed up when you realize that, you know, that, you know, when Power Tech tells him, JJ, I want, like, I can't, like, I, I can't go to the bathroom with, without you. It's like, he's like, fine. It's like, you get this, like, scene where, like, you're just, like, they're just bathing together. It's like, and, like, even Denji, like, who's, like, you know, like, 15 year old horniness embodied, just, you know, doesn't, doesn't twig on to the fact that, to the, to the fact that, you know, he's, like, you know, just, you know, like, watching this naked girl. It's like until like the very the very end, and even then, it's like you know he doesn't um, you know like you know, take advantage of her, which is like you're really kind of impre- impressive and you know you know responsible for the, him. But even then, like it, like this whole like depressed mode that he's in, like leads him to like basically talking to Makima and saying like you know now that he's finally taken out the Gun Devil, like he can like um, get Makima to grant him his one wish, which. You know, like we all thought it was gonna be like you know sex, but you know it turns out you know he's just like so depressed about all this that he's just like you know mocking. I just want you to just, just make all my decisions for me. I just want to be. I just don't want to think anymore. And she's like, okay, now <laughs> go open the store. She just fucking <laughs> monkey paws him. Yes, she because like oh behind that door is power and. Makima just kills her because, you know, she's a control devil, and her ultimate goal here has been to just, you know, take control of the chainsaw devil. Because the chainsaw devil um, has the ability that we've probably hinted at before to just um, not only eat devils, but also when he eat when he eats them, basically erases what they're what they represent from the uh, like from the world itself. And I think this is like a kind of a uh, reach exceed the grasp type thing that I kind of wish Fujimoto had gone into before because when um like she talks talks about this to um to a kishibe as um denji is uh, going going full bore mur- like a um, mur- murder heavy on her on her uh on her devils after he's he's been let loose she tells him like you remember the nazis it's like and kishibe's like nazis like basically like it's implied that he's Eat a whole bunch of like you know devils that you know represented like a lot of fears as well, and the idea is that you know Makima just you know wants to uh, you know make the world a better place by eating these fears, and this is kind of a uh, idea that you know sounds good in practice, but um, theory, maybe, yeah, in theory, but um, but it's like uh, when you. Uh, it's like when you deal with do the it's like in practice, it's kind of like you're wondering like, well, what you know, kind of what what do we have to worry about? Like if we if we've eaten all these fears, and this is when um you know Denji has gone like gone to full chainsaw man mode, and you know like is basically like I'm you know, tormenting um um Kobeni like who has gone to work for a, a burger joint at this point. It's like, and like she forces her to go you know like I'm full DDR, and it's like it's it's really great um like black really dark com- comedy here but the uh but um the 10th volume ended with um with makima you know using trying to attempt to use her devils to like um bring bring denji to heal and then we get to the final um volume where um she's just about to like um pull that off only to reveal that you know power is still alive and she's still in denji's blood and she's able to come back um through pochita's urging because Pochita is still, you know, in Denji, like, but he's like, like his heart, his heart, and she, he, but Pochita's like, just wants, like, you know, use, use what's left of power to, like, you know, save Denji. Now, power, kind of does that, even though she also basically like offers like Denji up to uh, Makima at one point. But I'm sure that was just, you know, misdirection, wasn't it, Steve? <laughs> <laughs> to the very end like even even when you know she's ultimately helping denji you know she's still true to herself and her character which hey i think it's pretty great indeed it's like i i, I like i like what happened to her it's like and even though it's like she's essentially dead at the end of, in at the end of the final volume it's implied that you know there's a way there's going to be a way to bring her back but at the same time, like, you know, Denji is able, she is able to bring bring Den- Denji back to himself. 
but at the same time, you know, it's like it's a it's a way, it's an existence that is basically, um, you know, he can't be Chainsaw Man, it's like because otherwise, um, you know, Makima is gonna like you know find out who he is, and might find out where he is and then come come get him. Um, Kobeni and Kishibe are basically like you know there to help him out, but um, Denji basically realizes that. No, it's like I want like all the great stuff that become that is part of being Chainsaw Man. I want the girls, the glory, everything. And Kishibi's like, well, okay, so what are you gonna do? And then she's like, I got a plan. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's a plan. It, it it is definitely a plan. It involves um Denji getting um luring a Makima to uh it's like to big old, to a big old grave graveyard site and then like you know doing his best to murder all the devils that she's um brought in to like, take him down and then you know taking him out and then eventually take, taking him out to grab um the pochita from his chest this is obviously allow her to be control chainsaw man and uh, an actor actor plans at the end except it's not this has basically been big old misdirection because in the previous volume we find out that you know hey Denji can, you know, regenerate himself, you know, it's like, like you, like using Pochita, and it turns out that, you know, he was able to, to create a, uh, like a chainsaw out of blood, like out of powers, powers blood as the blood devil, to, you know, like, like, stymie, um, like a Makima from like, you know, taking taking her out because she thinks she's taking him out, but nope, she hasn't, and the Denji, you know, being like, you know, over there hits her with this chainsaw and like uh, you know is this able to stop her which makes perfect sense right right steve i mean you're, you're gonna back me up on this right well yeah i mean they do explain it afterwards that you know it and the the explanation is really sad remember like um when he's having his debrief with uh it's kishibe right the the yeah. veteran hunter Mm -hmm. um, when he's having his debrief with him after this climactic battle, uh, Kishue asks him, "Hey, you know, this? Why, you know, why didn't she notice you, right?" And um, so it's at this point that Pochita, Pochita has been divorced from like uh, from Denji's body at this point in the fight, and Denji just sort of strolls up and murderizes like Makima, and um, you know he asks, "How how how didn't she notice you?" and Denji says, I think she was always only ever looking at the chainsaw devil in me. She never saw me and she never recognized me. So it was a smell that she said. Yeah, it was this it was a scent, right? And so, you know, after Pochita had, you know, had been torn from him, right? Uh, as part of this his master plan, um, you know, he was he was essentially invisible to her and just just was allowed to just walk up and murderize her. And you know, it's it's a very sad moment. You know, I mean, it, it ultimately lets him win this fight, but it's a very sad moment when you know Makima never saw him at all, right? He never had a chance with her ever, um, and he and you know he he just accepts that as he's you know telling Kishibe about the uh, about how the fight went down, and I was like, man, even even at the end of this, you know, like he just can't catch a break. Yeah, he he can't catch a break, but at the same time. He knew that, and he was able to use it to his, to his advantage in the end. And you know, it's like, I mean, that I want to. That's that's thoroughly depressing. But at the same time, you know, it's like he was still able, he was still able to make it work and like and and win in the end. And like that that makes that makes it less depressing. It's like in my it's like in my opinion. It's like and even then though, and then it leads into like the final part, where it's like, hey, you know, cannibalism. Because you know he's not going to defeat her; he's just going to like abs absorb her, which is ultimately you know what she wanted in the end. <laughs> yeah, it's it's pretty fucked up. It's a pretty fucked up end. Um, I mean, it's a good, it's a it's a final resolution to like to a um, to a character that like Makima. Like I forget what exactly it was she was not she couldn't be attacked, was it? I forget what exactly her deal was. Yeah, I, th I think it was just like the, uh, like uh, yeah, it's like I think it was like the she couldn't like like she couldn't be attacked like that she would just be able to re regenerate 
to like regenerate herself but like like because i think i think because like denji was unknowingly at least like you know he um it's like he, he leaned into what what she wanted it's like like it wasn't it wasn't an offensive attack even if he was just you know eating her remains in various forms like like was it tonkatsu sashimi sushi even her hair at some point you know but you know, yeah guys... it's, he, he i think he like uh he explains it away by saying well this isn't this isn't really me hating on her like this is still me trying to you know this is still still me trying to become one with her in some way right mm -hmm. and so he's you know he's just munching away and um you know turns out hey this is this is how you this is how you defeat an immortal demon in the end yeah except it's not really it's how you defeat the point of view of an immortal demon because the demon is still there in the end she's just she's just like in in a new like like um clean oh uh, yes that's here. right that's right the devil returned uh the devil returned but not but not as makima um, she, she, and, she bit his she bit his finger and he was like i know this bite it's like oh my god it's like what is she it's like and she was like oh I, I i poached her from china so yeah so he and it's kishibe's hope that you know he'll you know as devils are you know never actually die they they do just the, keep getting the, reborn yeah they keep getting <laughs> yeah reborn. it's like like they, they be, they're reborn in hell and they're also reborn on earth as well and uh yeah it's as kishibe says you know he's he's like hey you know what uh you know take care of her razor and uh hopefully she won't she won't turn out like makima again yeah and i got to admit that's kind of like a pretty good point to uh to end the, to end the series on because i mean like yeah the series is basically like 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 the final like the final part of the series like says in part one public safety arc just kind of like um okay so yeah it's like it's but it, but at the same time you get the feeling that like oh that 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 Fujimoto was just kind of like, oh man, it's like, so I did a jump series. Great, man. It's like, I need a break now. I really need a break. It's, yeah. And it's like, and then the next arc is basically supposed to be like, like I think like the, uh, like the high, like the school arc. So we were told that he, we were told at the end that he's now in high school. So basically it's like, you know, you've got like um, big brother chainsaw man going to high school, like interacting with the kids for the first time. And also having to be like you know big brother to the control devil now, which you know, if I were you know if I recall Steve, I mean like you love it when um like you know a series that like, goes like into a full like high school arc, you know like dealing with, like all like high school stuff, like and all you know. Well, normally I do. Normally I really hate that sort of thing, but you know what? I'm I'm gonna trust I'm gonna trust uh Fujimoto to uh you know to once again break expectations and deliver something interesting yeah it's like and to be honest like i was kind of wondering if like this was actually going to happen because this this whole the series wrapped up in 2020 and you kind of figure that oh well okay it's like you know he's just gonna need a couple a month or two break you know before he just dives right into uh like the next arc but no that's that's not what he did in fact um he's basically like he's only going to start the uh the the um the high the, the school arc like this month on shonen jump plus which basically means he's going to the uh he's not going to be doing the weekly grind it's it sounds like he's just he's going to like the uh he's going to the digital um um wing of this of the uh of the site which is where we get um stuff like kaiju number eight from so but um i will i do want to um briefly mention that you know that in the uh intervening years um since he stopped chainsaw man He's actually put out a couple really good one shots. In fact, longtime listeners will know that hey, I really liked um, "Look Back," which um, was my favorite title of it's like it's like of 20, 2021, and I'm absolutely looking forward to picking it up in in print form when it comes out in September. But also, um, he did um, like another one shot earlier this year called "Goodbye Eri," which um, you know takes a look at you know what happens when like, a kid who's like you know forced to document his mother's life. The end of his mother's life also decides to um like incorporate a bunch of explosions into that that story and also means up to the vampire which which you know it's like you think you hear that and you think like wow man that that sounds like a thing like a thing that happened but this is the guy who managed to wrench like some sympathy and empathy 
about a kid who just you know could generate chainsaws from his limbs and you know was good by airy it's like he manages to like you know wrench some sympathy you know from from the whole cool guys don't look at explosions bit so yeah it's I I kind of wish that I'm not gonna have to wait a year to get that um, in print, but you know it's like I was, but until it was announced that you know Fujimoto was coming back like you know next month with um like with the uh, with the next part of Chainsaw Man, I would have been perfectly fine with him just you know doing one shots like this in Jump like on a yearly basis. Yeah, I mean, you, Steve, how do you feel about that? You know what. <sighs> I'd like him to release things sooner, but you know, you know, and and more quickly. But you know, he's going to operate on his own schedule. You know, like much as me, we may want it to be otherwise. We're just going to have to content ourselves with, you know, being happy with whatever he releases and whenever he does it. Yeah, I mean, it's like I'm glad that he's like continuing to release manga, whether it's like you know the uh, these like exercise one shots, you know, these volume size one shots, or just you know. Um, like you know him continuing chainsaw man which i think we're we're i think both of us are looking forward to it i mean like yes you know there were some there's some awkwardness some inconsistencies with with chainsaw man but you know it's like i think that um has like you know the mainstream has you know decided that hey you know chainsaw man is incredibly awesome and you know while i think it would be like you know one thing for like us to be iconoclast and say oh no man this it's like this uh this like um this main this this new thing that the mainstream has put out. Oh, it's not cool, man. Nope. Chainsaw Man is definitely cool. It's definitely inspiring. And if you're if you're it's a kind of series that, yeah, it's like your parents definitely wouldn't want you to read, but you should definitely read it anyway. Especially like if you're still in touch with your inner 15 year old. Yeah. Like uh like whatever you're doing, drop it and go read some chainsaw man. That's my yeah. thought. Yeah, and they're gonna read um Fire Punch because you know, it's 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 kind of fucked up in the in the more extreme way too. <laughs> yes, it sure is. Uh, I'll understand if uh I'll understand if uh you know you don't want to read it though. Uh, it's look, I like it. It makes me feel things, but it could definitely be uncomfortable for some people. I think. Well, yeah, more I mean so that than Chainsaw Man. I think. Yeah, I mean that first, that first volume is kind of like a um get the fuck out if I ever heard it. But John, you got thoughts on it? Ew. <laughs> Animalism, ew. Like that was weird, man. I don't know. <laughs> so I, I, I don't know. Um, yeah. So that's it's my not for everybody. Yeah, I would say. Uh, yeah, yeah. That that. There's not a lot that would really gross me out, but that actually does. So mm, yeah, probably a pass for me, just based upon that kind of content so yeah but, but chainsaw man less cannibalism more for everyone as a result yay <laughs> <laughs> cool all right so do you know what you're going to be talking about next time jason oh man it's like um it could it could be powers it could be my break and break in case of emergency podcast on sweet tooth um i may you know need to like um rope in myron and um rob to talk about um um, no one left to fight again, but you know, it could, I've got plans. It's like, I just not 100% sure about them as well. But at this point, you know, Steve, thanks for joining us again. And of course, absolutely, man. It's like, always look forward to having your thoughts on this. And Hey, you heard that, um, Kaguya Sama is wrapping up in volume 28 or what is it? Volume, volume 20. Yeah. It's volume 28. Oh, really? So, yeah. It's so, I mean, it's like, I mean, I'm sure you've got thoughts about that. I do. I mean, but you know what? This should be shared at another time. Yeah. So it's like, I mean, it's yeah. So I mean, like it's once I mean, like, I'll definitely want to have your, have you back to talk about that. And maybe we'll find something to talk about like in, in the meantime before then, but we'll, but we shall see. Sure. All right. So on that note, goodbye everyone. And Talk to you later. See ya.